Next up, Tom Eriks, uh, who runs uh, sales for the United States for Facebook, is here to tell us about partnering in a social world. Um, and I'm going to let you take it away. My daughter, who's uh, she's going to Billy Elliot on Wednesday night, she's all of nine, so I'm not sure that's a good idea or a bad idea. But uh, she's going to be absolutely thrilled that her, uh, her aging father, uh, daddy is uh, here on Broadway, and this is about as close as I'm ever going to get to Broadway, so I'm going to lap it up. So, uh, hope everyone's doing great. So, uh, Tom Eric's U.S. Sales, I appreciate the opportunity. It's Monday morning, so we're going to wake you all up and, uh, and, get, uh, and uh, get you engaged. Um, so, today I'm going to talk about partnering in a social world. So, the, um, it's, not, it's not a surprise when we look at uh, what's happened in, in the last two years that the social has changed everything. And it's, uh, it's also uh, pretty obvious, and if we'll map it back in a few minutes, that the world's gone social. So who's done something social to today? Raise your hands. That's a lot of people. So we have a whole group up there. Um, and then uh, we've seen an amazing acceleration of brands that have gone social too. So I'm going uh, to be really bold here and just say that all of us are way behind the times. We're all old enough to know that if we want to know what's going to go on tomorrow, we have to look at what's happening today. And what's happening today is teens in America and around the world email 14% of the time. So what are they doing? It's the obvious. They're texting, and they're doing something very social. Um, so uh, I know all of us are, 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 are trying to accelerate our ways into uh, technology. but uh, the, the things that are uh, really, really uh, shocking is that not that long ago, and John Hayes was up here uh, from American Express, you would, just a few years ago, you would never think about putting your, your real identity online, right? Like how many people not too long ago would sit there and say, I'm not putting my credit card down and buying something online. I'm not sure what's going to happen. I'm not going to represent myself as Tom Eriks uh, authentically. I'm going to represent myself as TA1234. All of us did that, right? It's really amazing to look back and to even look at yourself today and not represent yourself authentically. So here's a story, uh, and this is Carlos, by the way, who lives in East Haven, Connecticut. You know, John Lavecchia in the house. This is close to uh, our hearts. Uh, Carlos was stricken with, uh, a very, with diabetes years ago and was in a grave condition and created kidney failure. So like hundreds of thousands of uh, folks around the world are in line with, with uh, uh, organ donation. Uh, Carlos was in grave shape and was uh, very close to dying. So through his Facebook relationship, he reached out desperately in a status update. Basically said, I need your help. So who helped him? None other than the East Haven mayor. Uh, and she wrote him a private note and said, uh, hey, Carlos, you know, I'm here to help. I'll test, and hopefully, hopefully uh, there's a match. Uh, April 8th, Carlos received his uh, kidney from Almon, uh, the East Haven mayor, and uh, they're both doing great. So it's just a, a way of connecting on Facebook uh, where, God forbid, something uh, could have happened if that was not the case. Uh, the old storm drain. So two girls in Australia not too long ago were trapped in a storm drain. Uh, luckily, they had their cell phones with them, right? So um, what did they do? They updated their Facebook status, right? So for fortunately, fortunately, the girls were saved. So uh, if we were to offer any advice to anybody who happens to be in that situation going forward is uh, call 911. Don't update your Facebook status. This is an ad uh, that ran in London, Liverpool Station in London. And it's a, uh, a flash mob ad. Uh, and uh, it was really cool. But what happened uh, after was even cooler. So two weeks later, uh, those that, that visit Liverpool Station on a daily basis, it's their community from a community standpoint in London, 
uh, joined a group on Facebook. And 12,000 of them re, uh, re-engineered this uh, flash mob ad experience. It's pretty amazing. Basically shut down the station, as you could imagine. Um, from a rallying cry, there's, there's nothing more powerful uh, when disasters hit around the world, and we saw it with Haiti. So uh, during that, that, that awful moment uh, in weeks to follow, over 1,500 status updates were uh, happening on a, on a per minute basis on Facebook. And those that were part of the global uh, disaster relief on Facebook, which is a group uh, of, uh, at the time, 300,000 people rallied around this group. This group alone drove $400,000 in relief donations to Red Cross and other uh, disaster relief uh, help down in Haiti. So people care. So the world has gone social. So just in a, a, a year's time, Facebook has gone from 200 million users to over 400 plus million users. If we were to categorize ourselves as a country, we'd be the fourth the third largest, excuse me, third largest country in the world at 400 plus million users with 100 million mobile uh, connections and growing. Cheryl Sandberg came to the company two and a, half, uh, two, a little over two, uh, two years ago and uh, she kind of stopped things in our, tr- in our tracks and we used to sit there and say, 50% of our audience comes back every day. And she sat there and said, you guys are crazy. You guys can't keep saying that. The early adopters are here and as this thing grows, that number inevitably is going to go down. Sounds very logical, right? So uh, today at 400 plus million, it's still 50%, which is amazing. Uh, And it just speaks to the power of connections, the power of the sharing that people are doing with one another. And here's a heat map of of where it maps out around the world. So 70% are outside the United States, if you didn't know that. So just another testament that the world has gone social. In December of 2009, uh, the average time spent was a little over five and a half hours uh, per month per user. Today it's over seven. I think it's just speaking really powerful the fact that connections, wherever they are, uh, are are being really knitted closer and closer together. And the time spent, so this this anonymous web experience, information-driven web experience is really really accelerating towards a more social, personally uh, identified web experience, and the time is telling that pretty dramatically. So brands can go social too. Not only are people really powerful in their connections uh, in the social graph, but brands play an incredibly powerful role, incredibly powerful and important role. Uh, Here's a video just to give you a snapshot of The things brands are doing to leverage connections, to be authentic, and to really knit themselves into a transformational way of marketing uh, for years to come. Take a look. How do you build your business? You work hard to establish a brand. You strive to meet your customers' needs every day. You listen to their feedback and develop meaningful relationships with them. You welcome their referrals and grow networks. But how do you reach more people and still build authentic relationships? What if there was a way to engage all your customers anytime? What if it was easy to foster a strong community around your brand? Your customers are on Facebook every day. It's an essential part of their daily life. They engage with each other, sharing their passions with like-minded individuals. They join in conversations and continuously discover content that is meaningful to them. It's an active and authentic audience made of real individuals with real interests of a size and scale that has never been seen before. And they're talking about their favorite brands. On Facebook, you can join in the conversation. Create your own page where you help stimulate discussion around your product. Run highly effective ads that engage people when they're most likely to connect with your brand. Create a poll. Ask customers for feedback or to RSVP to an event. Every time someone interacts with your ads, it's shared with their network of friends. Their personal recommendations offer the strongest kind of endorsement and result in a dramatic increase in brand lift. With Facebook, you build community by sharing meaningful content and by empowering your customers to spread the word for you. You can reach hundreds of millions of people on a global scale. 
or precisely the ones that matter to you most. The world has gone social. Be part of the conversation. So we break it down a couple different ways. Is go simple, go real, and go big. All to, to frame out, it's about leveraging the ad platform for scale and establishing indelible connections for the long-term uh, deep dive relationship that you can build as a brand. So the first example is Starbucks. Uh, without, a qu without a question, Starbucks has kept it incredibly simple, but they've been able to build a connection with a user base that has got scale, and every time they advertise, the social context that they, that they put into the stream uh, becomes more and more powerful. So what's Starbucks doing? They do two things really, really well. They speak in an incredibly authentic voice and a very humble voice. So when, you, when the door uh, closes behind you, when you leave the coffee shop, you have a sense of what Starbucks means to you as a consumer. They've done an incredible job when you come to their, their re reconnecting the, uh, the Starbucks page and, and are part of that relationship on Facebook. They're speaking the same tone and offering in the same kinds of experiences that you would see in a coffee shop and experience in the coffee shop. This is, these are uh, photos, uploads from, uh, from uh, Howard Schultz's trip um, to Rwanda. So uh, again, sharing, way, sharing his experiences, bringing uh, free trade experiences back to the, those that care about his brand, those that are genuinely interested. Uh, they share pictures, they share videos, and they keep it very, very simple. But what they do from a mapping standpoint, they, um, here we go, uh, they advertise. And they advertise about once a month, and they do it around promotions. So some of you may have been a part of this in late March, which is uh, free pastry day. Uh, and they've done sustainability ads. So basically, once a month, Starbucks is going out there and blasting out to their, to their audience. And when they're doing that, they're getting people to connect. When they're doing that, people are sharing. Uh, people are participating. And then, when they're not advertising, they're doing things like having uh, pictures uploaded from a Howard Schultz trip, uh, videos. They're just connecting in very lightweight ways with those that are raising their hand. When they did this back in March tw uh, 23rd, 94, they saw a 94% uh, lift in those that were going to uh, visit the store that day. So pretty incredible numbers in the power of their, uh, of their message. Next one is vitamin water. Did anybody here participate in this program? So this is a, uh, this is a crowdsourced program that the brand teams at vitamin water uh, wanted to do something uh, that was going to drive their product innovation. So instead of taking a year to 18 months to develop a product and have that product show up on shelves, they wanted to accelerate it. And they wanted to take 350,000 fans at the time and grow that to north of a million people who are going to participate in the creation of a product. So what did they do? They had three different stages. They had, they had folks that would, that would weigh in on the vitamins that they would like to see in this, uh, this new product. The flavors uh, that would possibly blend it into uh, this new product. And this product from September start was on shelves for the vitamin water tie-in to their sponsorship to the NCAA tournament in March of 2010. Uh, an amazing crowdsource. The value proposition that, the, that those that were connected to vitamin water were part of something incredibly dynamic. Uh, the product is called uh, is Connect. Uh, it's got a little caffeine for that added boost for those that are, uh, uh, that are in need of it. Um, and it's been a, a six-month cycle and an incredible testament that a brand can, can move fast and a brand can be really authentic and real in how they're doing so. Uh, Best Buy. Best Buy is, is one of the, the, the main drivers of, of social shopping. Uh, they've done a phenomenal job on the platform. And this is just an example of what Best Buy has done. Uh, and they ask really simple questions. Not a litany of questions. They ask one question in this instance. They said, what are your favorite vampire movies? People participated. And the next day, both online and in store, they were selling those vampire movies that the users wanted to see. So listening and acting quickly and being super nimble as an organization uh, helps knit that relationship even tighter with their consumer base. Coca-Cola with Go Big. 
This is a really exciting uh, uh, big event strategy where there are many brands that embrace the big events like the Super Bowl. And Coca-Cola was one of them for many, many years. And what they've done so well is they've created what is traditionally a one-day experience. And depending upon the quality of the game, maybe not as great as experience as a brand may anticipate. And they stretched it out over two weeks. So they've taken the concept of a big event and they've created this social overlay uh, experience that stretched it from not just one day, but to over two weeks. And the concept was, was really simple, is uh, give a virtual Coke, and Coke gives a dollar to the Boys and Girls Club. So doing good uh, is, is, was a real driver here. Uh, and I think from a, from a learnings perspective, what a Coke and a big event uh, advertiser can see and take away is big events are, are inherently social, so developing a social strategy that is going to create the participation well in advance of the actual event and to follow the event is really smart. And then lastly is really a combination of, of all three uh, pillars of go simple, go real, and go big. And it's around, without a doubt, the greatest sporting event that our planet has ever seen and probably will ever see. Uh, and the role that social has going forward in an event like the World Cup uh, is only going to get more exciting for brand marketers uh, and, and most importantly, more exciting for consumers. We're going to be able to participate and drive as, low, as, 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 uh, as deeply into a community experience and passion-based experience uh, than ever before. Take a look. Pretty amazing. So that, that, uh, that spot ran on Facebook on May 22nd, which is the European Championships. Ran in 20 countries, 15 different languages. Uh, and it was just an amazing kickoff, no pun intended, 
to Nike's role into the World Cup, which starts this weekend. Thank you very much, everybody. Tom, thank you. I want to ask you one question. Sure. This it just isn't fair of me to do this, but I'm going to do it. Um, that was really amazing. Thank you for coming. And, and th I didn't tell him I was going to do this, but I just want to ask you kind of from the point of view of what do you say when clients say to you, what's the deal with privacy over the last month? Right. Wow. You didn't mention it up here, wow. and I couldn't let you get off stage, but like <laughs> when, a custom, when a client calls you concerned or you're in a right. meeting, just give us what you yeah. say back when they give you that question. Yeah, I mean, it's privacy or controls on our site have always been there. Um, I think the most important takeaway is uh, the user controls their information and always has. Yeah. And it's something that uh, we need to make sure that uh, the, they're, they're leveraging them. So from a brand perspective, they understand that. And then from a user side is uh, the simplification. And, and you saw some of the things that Mark has, uh, has uh, publicly gone out right. and talked about. Um, the controls are, are there. They're improving every day. Uh, it's the user's information, which is yeah. the most important. And that's, that's the most important takeaway, is that, is that people, our relationships, our clients, really feel comfortable with the fact that this is their information. Um, can you summarize can what the them. changes are that were announced last week so, so folks here understand them? Yeah, I mean, there's, it, it's probably best to go to the website, which will give you a far better uh, right. breakdown than myself. But um, it's all about simplification of the controls. So making sure that uh, the, the things you want to share, you're controlling those. Yeah. And, and this is a, what I was talking about in the opening, of the instrumentation. Like we're still in this back and forth of understanding right. instrumentation. I checked in uh, uh, here at the CM Summit this morning, and I got the player please badge from Foursquare because I had checked in at the same place where there were three other people of the opposite sex. <laughs> That's an instrumentation issue. Right, right. <laughs> Michelle, if you're out there, yeah. I'm here at the CM Summit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's morning, and I'm not at a bar being a player. <laughs> so yeah, we still have some instrument, instrumentation work to do. But thank you for being a sport and taking that question. And thank you for Thanks, coming. John. All right.